This video is going to be about elevating your Instagram on your own. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kavya. I'm currently wearing my PJs, hanging out on my couch. You guys are gonna have to excuse this zit cream I have on my face right now. Y'all, today I'm doing something so freaking highly requested. And this is also honestly a video that I really needed a few years ago. A lot of the information in this video is very simple and very straightforward. If you have been with me for a while, you know that I am a big fan of like breaking down these complex topics, making them as simple and easy Easy to follow as possible. I feel like I'm finally in a really good place to share this information. I don't want to give you guys the same tips as everybody else on the internet that talks about this. I think I have found such a simplified way to do this. I could take 10 Instagram pictures in one day if I wanted to at this point. It's really just boiled down to a few key tips and steps that I'm going to be sharing with y'all today, okay? Today's video is going to be about elevating your Instagram. One of my biggest flaws in life, honestly, is I can operate at 150% when I can control my environment. Like I need to be living by myself. I need to have my tools, my resources, peace and quiet. And something that I have been kind of bad at in the past is asking for help. So if you're like me in any way and you want to grow your social media platforms, but you feel like you don't have a friend or don't have someone you're comfortable enough with to help you grow that, like you can't just go to the mall and ask your friend to come with you and take pictures of you, then this video is for you. We're gonna be talking a lot about self portraits and tools and resources that you can use to do this thing on your own because that's how I started out. I had very limited resources and I made it happen. Before we get into it, happy International Women's Month, you guys. Speaking of elevating our content, I have been dying to do a more businessy type of shoot, something a lot more powerful. I live for like a bikini on the beach moment that has very much been my aesthetic since I moved to California. I wanna do something a lot more structured and I've been looking for good pieces. If you have a good staple piece of clothing that can really make or break certain shoots. So I've been wanting to do more of like a businessy professional shoot, kind of something like this, but of course I wanna self shoot it. I went out looking for pieces and I pulled some from this brand called Love Bonito. I feel like a lot of their pieces scream confident boss. They have power suits for job interviews, flirty little summer dresses, workout sets, pretty much anything you can imagine. They have something for everybody. First, I have on this little black top right now. I'm not wearing a bra under this, which honestly for me, almost impossible to find shirts where I don't need support. If you're like me and you have like tiny little noodle arms and a crazy chest, I love just like the style of top. This is also something that's really nice to shoot photos in because it's so simple. If you wanna do like a cute selfie moment or something like that, I feel like a nice black top is a staple because then you're drawing all the attention to your hair, your makeup, whatever the case may be. I also picked out a couple of nice jackets. I love this tan trench coat and how it accents my feminine curves while still being super professional. It's like an elegant twist on a boring trench coat and looks really high fashion. Everybody needs a cozy gray cardigan. It's been raining so much in Los Angeles and I love throwing this on on a rainy day like today. I throw this on over everything. I also got these nice khaki dress pants. I actually wore these into the studio for a meeting on Monday. I also don't know what sorcery they did on these, but they somehow gave me a BBL effect. Like my hips look so nice in these pants, you guys. When it comes to professional clothing, I think it's difficult to find a color palette that I feel comfortable in because I don't want to sacrifice my identity and my love for bright colors and patterns patterns when I am dressing for a more professional environment or more professional shoot. Pretty evident that Love Bonito does keep that in mind, like their color palette suits darker skin tone. So I'm really grateful to be working with Love Bonito this month because they are taking the time to empower Asian American women and other women of color, which I love and respect so much. Y'all know that a huge part of my identity and the reason that I'm on this platform is to empower you to unlock your goddess potential and be in your feminine power. So with that, Love and Bonito is actually holding a campaign called Feminine and Proud this month. So share your stories with me in the comments. Use hashtag Feminine and Proud and let's celebrate International Women's Month together. I'm also going to be giving you guys a discount code on Love Bonito's site. So this way you can upgrade your closet with clothes made to fit you today with Love Bonito. Go to the link in my description and use promo code LBXKAVIKIWI for 10% off of your order of $130 or more. Again, go to the link in my description and use promo code LBXKAVIKIWI for 10% off of your order of $130 or more. 
I'm gonna break this down into three major categories. The first one is the vibe. The second one is the techniques, the tools, etc., like actual things that you need to have. And then the third one is going to be the execution aspect of it. Let's start off with the most important, but also the most free of all of the concepts. And that is going to be our vibe. One of the most important things that I think has differentiated me in social media, and I think everybody needs to take the time to do, is understanding your vibe. Understand your vibe. What exactly do you want people to see when they look at you? And again, another disclaimer, your social media is one of the places where you can really invent yourself and project yourself in the way that you want brands to see you and other people to see you. You can be super, super fake, but the more authentic you are, the better. There are a couple of things that you can do to figure out your vibe and to figure out your aesthetic. Another thing I wanna say is your aesthetic can change based on every single month, based on the time of the year, based on your mood. These are not like fixed factors, but my biggest, biggest, biggest piece of advice to figuring out your vibe is creating a Pinterest account and scrolling through that instead of being on TikTok. I love creating mood boards, you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and link my Pinterest because you guys are gonna see how many Pinterest boards I have. There are times when I will come up with a Pinterest board for a specific picture I wanna take. Before I go on a trip, I'll come up with a Pinterest board of the types of pictures I wanna take or the kind of vibe I wanna create. Think of your Instagram as like a little personal movie and you're just taking screenshots of the best scenes of the movie. There are so many people that make videos like I'm making right now where they're telling you what tips and tricks are going to elevate your Instagram. But the truth of the matter is authenticity is what is going to elevate your Instagram. There is not one way to succeed on Instagram Instagram, there's not one way to succeed on social media. You're gonna watch a lot of videos where people are like, shoot on plain backgrounds and make sure that you're only wearing neutral colors. I'm never gonna be the one to tell you that. What I will say is find an aesthetic, find strong examples of that aesthetic and try to pull from that. Make a list of five creators that you love and make a Pinterest board and just kind of look for common threads of things that you're gravitating towards and that way you'll have a strong image of what your vibe and what your aesthetic is. Make it different, be creative with it, change it every month. When I went to Bermuda with Revolve, I made a mood board and my vibe of the mood board was tropical, colorful vibes. My concept was island princess. So with the island princess aesthetic, I could immediately come up with a bunch of visuals and I could save a lot of stuff on Pinterest Then gave me ideas for cool content, like taking pictures in a mermaid cave, having little micro braids in my hair, wearing really bright colors. Super easy to get the creative juices flowing if you know what the vibe is. So step one, figure out the vibe. That is a key step that a lot of y'all are missing. I am a super duper baddie on a budget. I hate spending money on things that I don't need. So now we're going to go into more specifics. Here are things you need in order to elevate your content or things that will really help you. If I'm recommending a product to someone, it's going to be something that I genuinely think is worth the money. I'm never someone who's like buying things just cause. I know it works and I know exactly what I need to create the content that I like and that I want. There are two things that I use to take my pictures. I use either my iPhone, which is right here, or my Canon G7X Mark II, which I'm using to record this vlog right now. Let's talk about the $700 camera real quick. I was not about to just recommend something that was almost $1,000 and not give you guys any other options. Come on, we're better than that on this page. This camera, in my opinion, is an amazing, amazing investment. All of my pictures come out incredible. My video quality has gone up, as you guys have seen, if you've been on this YouTube journey for a while. Also, I bought this pink case for less than $15. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I get a lot of questions about how my camera is pink. Here's how. I'll have the links for you guys below. But you do not need to spend $700 to get this effect. You guys, my biggest advice to you, if you want the digital camera effect, but you don't wanna break the bank, go to either a thrift store or a secondhand camera store. You can thrift these cameras for less than $50. They're just slightly older models, but the flash and the effect is exactly the same. The major difference is this version of the camera, the expensive one. Basically, there's a little button on the side where you can press it and connect it to your phone and automatically upload 
everything to your phone. With the older models and the thrifted models, I'm assuming you would probably have to buy a cable and manually import them. So if you're a creator, spend the extra money and get this if you want that convenience. But if it doesn't bother you, don't break the bank. There are cheaper options for you out there. The next things that you need to invest in are tripods. I have a total of three tripods. I have this one, which is for my iPhone, and I'm going to have the link, it's from Amazon. I love it because it's collapsible so I can travel with it. It's also like super tall and really easy to use. This is what I use for all of my iPhone pictures. There's this little thing that you can take off and you can hold it in your hand and take pictures. I have two of those. I keep one in my car and I keep one in my house. The next tripod I have is the one that I'm using to film right now for my camera. When I'm using my camera for self portraits, I would much rather have a tripod that I can adjust rather than like stacking your camera on top of multiple books and stuff. Also with tripods, you have the ability to adjust like slight angles and tilts and stuff like that. You need to have good tripods in order to make good stable content. Trust me on that. The final thing that you need to invest in for good content is good lighting. I have a ring light from Amazon. I use this when I am filming videos. I also use this when I'm taking certain types of content, like when I'm taking fashion content, TikTok reels, things of that nature. Um, I also have this Alex Earl light. If you know, you know. I've had this one for a while and I've actually used three different brands of these and this one so far is my favorite so i will link this for you as well this is what i use for all of my tiktoks that are up close like more face shots and things like that but you want to invest in a ring light and a portable light just to enhance your pictures okay i have recently been using my camera to take pictures and whenever i take my digital pictures i always force the flash. The lighting of your pictures is going to make or break it, okay? I don't care what the background is, I don't care what you look like. If the lighting is off, the photo is off. So these little portable lights can really give you an insurance policy in making sure that your photos come out really crisp and really clear. This is the thing that I have been gatekeeping for the longest time. I can't believe more people don't talk about this. This is what built my social media career and it's kind of the biggest life hack ever. For about two and a half years, took all of my pictures using my front camera on my iPhone. And I'm talking almost every single picture, whether it was outside, inside, whatever the case may be. I make sure that I clean the front camera with a microfiber towel. So I'll set up my phone on my tripod and go to whatever location it is, start recording, make sure that the lighting and everything is good. Maybe I'll use my portable light as well. And I would start taking a video and then I'll go back frame by frame frame and screenshot all of the pieces that I like. Now, because the front camera is inherently a little bit lower quality, I kind of opted to put grain on a lot of my pictures to kind of mask that low quality effect or kind of just embrace the low quality of it. But I find that using the front camera was so beneficial for me also to learn modeling because I could see myself and I could see what I like, what I don't like. It helped me experiment a lot with my posing as well. Another thing I wanna talk about is the rule of thirds. If you put your photo grid on, you can actually see all of these sections. You wanna make sure that you are putting the subjects kind of centered. The human brain loves symmetry. So if you're using the rule of thirds, the rule of fours, it's really easy to kind of create a nice composition for your photos. I think if your lighting is good and if the photo is composed well, the photo is gonna come out really crisp. You don't have to be a Victoria's Secret model to make your Instagram look like you know how to pose. I am someone who constantly goes back to my like model face, like literally half my pictures are like this. Recently, I've decided to just be myself and post a picture that shows the most personality because when I'm looking at other people's pages, when I'm looking at other models, influencers, creators, and people that I want their content popping up on my page, something I've noticed is I love expressive personalities. I love looking at somebody's page and being able to kind of create a story of who they are in my head. Whether or not that story is accurate, I don't know, but ultimately like the more personality that you're showing through your poses and your faces and like the more relatable you can be, the better. And relatability shouldn't be completely curated because people are gonna tell you like, be more relatable, make your pictures more candid, easygoing. The secret to being candid, easygoing and relatable 
is being candid, easygoing, and relatable, you guys. This stuff does not need to be overcomplicated. Once you have the strategies and the tools and like you have everything that you need to actually create the content, everything else should be fun. Another tip that I have for posing is also very vibe-based. Think about what you're wearing or where you are and kind of create like an aesthetic to go with that. So let's say I am in like an outdoor setting and I'm wearing a little sundress. So instantly my head is going to like frolicking in the fields like Taylor Swift music video, summer girl, like that type of aesthetic. And so all my poses would probably be very feminine, very flowy. Let's say I'm in Chicago, like in the city, blocky buildings in the back and I'm wearing leather outfit. Then I'm gonna wanna do something more angular, masculine, like high fashion. So I know that's really simple advice, but honestly, if you can kind of create concepts on the fly, your pictures will flow better and like, you want each set of photos to kind of tell a story. Sometimes I'll just take a picture because I like my outfit, I like my hair, I like my makeup, and that is enough of a reason too. If you wanna start expressing yourself creatively and like having pictures that are next level, definitely don't skip the creative process. Now I feel like I don't spend as much time actually planning out a creative concept. I feel like I have ideas really quickly. So it's almost like training your creativity muscle, working with whatever environment you have, whatever backgrounds you have, whatever equipment you have, and being able to create the best content that you can out of the resources you have available at the time. Since Instagram is a profile grid, it's really easy to create a really nice, pretty, profile grid aesthetic. What I find looks best is when you have a variety of distances and poses. I'm not gonna have three pictures next to each other where it is exactly my torso up and I'm framed in the middle. I would rather do one picture from far away and then the next one will be an up close selfie and then the next one would maybe be me sitting down and then you can kind of alternate cycles. One of the patterns that I tend to rely on the most is picture of me, filler photo, picture of me, filler photo. And the way that I've kind of incorporated that recently with short form video content, Instagram Reels, is I will use a picture of me and then I'll post a reel and I'll change the cover of the reel to be whatever I want so that my feed looks really nice and pretty and you can kind of see the aesthetic and the vibe. Again, you guys, I wanna stress this. The key to being successful on Instagram and social media is not caring about what other people think. Do you. Whatever your style is, whatever your aesthetic is, you are going to try and appeal to people that have a similar vibe and aesthetic as you. So don't do them a disservice and don't do yourself a disservice by trying to follow the latest trend and trying to follow something that you're not. Ultimately, the more authentic you are, the better your engagement is gonna be, the more responsive your community is gonna be. I like to think of it as my Instagram, my social media, my brand is my world. It's a little world that I've created and I want the people in this world to be inspired by me and my content. As much advice as you're gonna get on Instagram and on YouTube and from influencers about how to get the best Instagram photo and how to get the best social media presence, I want you to actually take the advice of finding your vibe, adjusting your vibe, being creative with it, and having fun. Because you're gonna make more money when you're having fun, if that, of course, is your end goal. Y'all, I'm not gonna lie, I have gone through phases with editing and like good phases, bad phases, everything in between. I had my FaceApp era, I still do use FaceApp. Like I like to be pretty transparent about it. Um, I had like a heavy FaceApp era when I first got the app and that I regret and that did mess with my confidence. But ultimately, I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to look like the best version of yourself on the internet. As long as you're not unrecognizable and it's not really affecting your self-esteem nothing wrong with like photoshopping a zit off of your face smoothing your smile lines these are things that I do and I like to be transparent about it I use Facetune way more than I use face I have the free version and the patch tool is like my best friend I've used the patch tool so much to get people out of the background to kind of clear up backgrounds and make things look more the way I want them to look so keep in mind that editing and changing things and manipulating photos be very aware of where your self-confidence levels are when you get into like changing your face. If that's something that's gonna affect your personality and that's something that's gonna affect the way you view yourself, absolutely stay away from those apps and stick to Tezza Visco. My favorite app for filters are Visco and Tezza. Tezza, I just recently bought because I've been really into like 
editing my digital camera photos with Tezza because it gives it that film effect. So I'm absolutely obsessed. It looks just like film photos and it just gives your pictures a little bit more character when you add grain. As, as we talked about before, I'm a big grain girl. Another really fun editing app is called Prequel. You can use that for videos as well as for photos. And that one has really cool effects that are really retro. You can add glitter, things of that nature. So I love Prequel as well. Visco is the app I'm the most comfortable using because I've been using it since I was in middle school. So those are my three main apps for editing the actual colors and compositions of photos. Start now, start taking pictures now, get into the habit of documenting everything that you're doing and start posting. It was so liberating for me when I stopped caring about what other people thought about my pictures and I started posting pictures that I like that make me feel beautiful and that I think other people like me would like to consume. I'm not creating content for the people I went to high school with. I'm not creating content for the people that hate me. I'm creating content for people that are inspired by me or who feel connected to me in some way and who I also feel connected to. You're not ugly, you're not bad at taking pictures, you're just not trying hard enough to learn how to be good at Instagram. So let this be episode one of how to improve your Instagram, take better pictures. I hope that this was helpful for you guys. Please make sure that you follow my Instagram if you want photo tips and photo inspo. I also post on Pinterest. My username on literally everything is Kavi Kiwi. Y'all know I live for a good aesthetic. I also started a YouTube page for my podcast and my cooking channel. Check those out below. I'll have them linked as well. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Leave your requests for other things that you would like my advice and to pick my brain on. I love you guys so much and I'll see you next time.